The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, good morning, everybody. This is Alfonso Esposito, and welcome to your Ignite conference in this particular webinar on Tick by Tick. So first off, let me just uh, see if everybody can hear me and can see the screen. I'm looking at it on my opposite screen, and I can see it, so that should be good. And then I just want to make sure the volume is good. Great. All right, so some familiar names I'm seeing type in. So welcome, everybody, Cheryl and Tom and, and Tom and Christine, and so lots of people that attend my trading labs on uh, weekly as well. So um, what we're going to cover this morning for the next hour or so is uh, I'm going to give you kind of a brief lesson on Tick by Tick, which is a comprehensive eight-class course that I wrote and I teach at TradeSmart. Um, I taught it live three times, and now it is fully on demand on the uh, site for all silver, gold, and platinum members. Now, of course, it's eight classes, so I can't cover it all in one hour. So what I did is that I carved out a couple of key, really kind of um, some of the important stuff, mostly on gaps and stuff. So I'm going to go through the 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 um, what we're going to cover in a moment here. But that's what we're going to cover here today. And then, of course, last week, if you had listened, I had given a nice 75-minute talk on my risky business class. And then next week, on Thursday at the same time, I'm going to be giving a webinar on my trading plans course. And then the following Thursday at 11 o'clock, I am going to be giving a one-hour webinar on my premier coaching. So um, hopefully you've all been enjoying the Ignite conference. I have listened in on a bunch of the talks, and uh, it's been great listening to Jeremy and uh, really great deliver some really awesome education. And it looks like you guys are getting and gals are getting some great value from it. So so uh, good stuff there. And of course we have Chris. Um, and Shane helping me out, answering any questions. They'll flag anything. Um, and so just briefly, for those of you who do not know me, I um, am been with TradeSmart for over a year. Like I said, I've written Tick by Tick, Risky Business, Trading Plans, and I'm also a premier coach, so I coach some of the students um, who want to get a little bit of immersion in their trading and really kind of make the, uh, uh, you know bridge the gap from where they are to where they, where they want to go quickly. And so... Um, so, uh, th that's a little bit about me. And then also I have been a, uh, full-time trader for the last, uh, well, just coming up on six years now. And so I primarily specialize in day trading, although I do swing trade as well. Um, but I, um, definitely am known as, you know, the full-time day trader and I actually operate a live day trading room. So, you know, I'm pretty immersed in it. I trade every day and, um, and so hopefully you'll get some great value from this talk because that's kind of what I do on a consistent basis, okay? So uh, first off, let me just ask so I can just get a little bit of a feel as to how many of you actually um, day trade currently. Are there any, you know, day traders that are listening in or or thinking about day trading or, right, you know, or anything along anything along those lines? either thinking about it or currently day trading. And I just have to, uh, for some reason, I lost my little question pane there. So I got to just see where I put that so I can see all your responses. There we go. Okay, thinking about it virtually, trying to, thinking about it, day trading. Okay, so a lot of thinking about it. Okay, good. So, well, let's get to it. Um, first off, you know, there's obviously the little disclaimer right? Educational purposes only, all of that good stuff, right? Trading has risk associated with it, so on and so forth, okay? And so let, let me go over what we're going to cover uh, in today's lesson. So I'm going to talk about the keys to success for day trading. What are some of the keys to success? I'm going to talk about the difference just briefly about retail account versus proprietary account because I get a lot of questions about that because there are some restrictions to be a pattern day trader and so I'll just briefly cover that. And then I'm going to talk about reversal times, just one slide. Um, and, and reversal times, there are certain kind of predictable times throughout the day where we can expect 
uh, price reverses. And so as day traders, um, we're always looking to time our entries on the strategies that we use and on the setups that we use around reversal times because it just gives us that little bit of an extra edge. And then I'm going to do briefly on gap analysis because that's what I primarily trade is stocks that have gapped. Um, and I'm going to talk the differences about what is considered a significant gap versus just a regular gap that would occur uh, in the market. Because stocks are always gapping, but we're looking for the ones that are significant, that are in play. They're typically due to some type of news event or earnings, and they really change kind of the landscape of the chart intraday and provide some great opportunities for us to kind of piggyback on the big money for the quick, fast moves intraday. And Then we're going to look at some specific gap trades, so the exact kind of setups that I use intraday, um, you know, that I call and we trade in my day trading room and just the, the, the exact, you know, I have like three or four kind of cookie cutter little setups that I use when um, trading gaps, and so I'm going to go over those with you, and then I'm going to show you some chart examples, okay? So we're going to have a lot to cover, but it'll be good stuff. So here we go. The first thing is I always like to include this for any time frame in which you're trading, is, you know, trade with an edge. The most effective way to consistently make money day trading or, you know, even swing trading for that matter is to trade only when there is opportunity and when you have an edge. And so the best way to know if you have opportunity or you're trading your edge is to have a really good detailed trading plan, have a good way to identify when you have your specific kind of trade strategy, trade setup presenting itself on the chart, and there's your edge. And then all you have to do is just go ahead and find out where your entry stop and targets are and go ahead and implement the trade. So what are some of the keys to success for day trading? Well, in day trading, less is always more. Uh, and the reason I say that is because when I first started day trading, um, I believed that more met more. So the more I did, the more trades I took, the more strategies I had, that would be what would lead me to, you know, uh, consistent money or bigger profits. Because that's kind of the way it works in life. If you want to be a good student, you have to obviously study more. If you want to, you know, be a big, you know, a big person with lots of muscles, you got to go to the gym and work out more. And if you want to be a great athlete, you have to practice more. And so typically, you know, the mindset is we have to do more to be more. But in trading, it's the opposite. The more you do, the more cluttered things become, the more overwhelming it becomes, the more uh, confusing it becomes. So less is always more. Less is always more. And in day trading specifically, really all you need is one good trade. One good trade. I mean, I used to trade all day, like just sit there all day, like right up until like 3.55 Eastern Standard Time. And now, I mean, even our room, we just changed our model where we close our room down at noontime. And it's very rare that we even take a trade after 11 o'clock in the morning because the best action and the best opportunities are usually within the first 90 minutes. And so all you need is really one good trade. That's it, right? All of the rest just uh, uh, helps your broker for paying commissions and stuff. Over trading is a losing strategy, right? The more you trade, the more commissions you generate, the more overwhelming it becomes, the more stuff you have to manage, the more all of that stuff. And it just typically um, very few people can take lots and lots and lots of day trades intraday and make it work. There is a few that can do it, but for the most part, over trading is typically not the way to a winning strategy. And then professional traders, and what I mean by that are, you know, the traders that make consistent money, they look for reasons not to trade, while novice or amateur traders are always looking for reasons to trade. So when I look at a chart, I'm always looking for things that don't match my plan. What would, why wouldn't I want to take this trade? Because I want to only trade the best. I only really need one good trade. Over trading is losing strategy. So I'm always looking for the best opportunities. So I'm always trying to I, uh, weed out trades by looking for trades, um, to looking not to trade. 
And then pick one strategy and become a specialist. Pick one strategy and become a specialist. Maybe you're going to decide if you want to do day trading that you want to be a gap trader or maybe you want to be a trend trader. Or there's a great strategy that I teach in Tick by Tick called Climactic Trades, which is a great intraday strategy. And I have some students to this day that continue to email me and say that all they do is they, they just decided they want to become a Climactic Trader. That's all they do. And they're you know, doing it consistently profitable and, and, uh, and they're loving it. So, you know, just pick one and become a specialist. You don't have to trade a hundred different ways. And then do it right from the beginning. And so what I mean by that is that, um, you know, trading is not a time, uh, trading is not a profession where you have, where you really want to do a lot of experimenting. If you're going to experiment with new strategies or new trade setups, you want to do it with either a very low risk unit or do it virtually. You don't want to, you know, this isn't a, um, a, a game to just experiment. You want to have your plan executed flawlessly and continue to repeat it again and again. You don't want to be uh, experimenting with your money in the market. That's never a good thing to do. Okay. So let's move on here to the next slide. Okay, so let's quickly talk about retail versus prop trading. So a retail trader is somebody that trades their own account. So I am a retail trader. I have a retail trading account at TradeStation. So I am a retail trader. Now, there are some laws and regulations for U.S. citizens that require a person to have greater than $25,000 in their trading account to be classified as a pattern day trader. Now, if you do not have $25,000 in your trading account and you have a margin account, and you make more than three round trips in a five-day period, you will immediately be flagged as a pattern day trader, and you won't be able to um, do that anymore. So you have to have a, more than $25,000 to be considered a pattern day trader. And if you are, if you have more than 25000 um, you have it allows you to do an, a, an unlimited number of trades intraday. There's no requirements. There's no three, and you you can't trade any more over five days. You can trade as many as you want, and you also get same day clearing. So, like in a cash account, you for stocks, you if you take a trade on Monday, and you buy on Monday morning and you sell out Monday afternoon, that money that you used for that trade will not become available again until Friday because it's the trade day plus three days. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then it clears, and then that money would be free to trade again on Friday. With a pattern day trading account, everything clears the same day. So if you have $100,000 in your account, you have 400,000 intraday buying power. If you make 2,000 you know, on Monday, you now have 102,000, and it's 102,000 times four available to you the very next day. There is, it's all same day clearing. And like I said, you get that four to one margin, although you get the four to one margin at most brokers, regardless if you're a pattern day trader or not. So at TradeStation, even if you had 10,000 in your account and you applied for margin, you would still have four to one intraday margin. Um, anyway, you just would not have the ability to take the number of trades that you would if you had a pattern day trading account. So what do you do if you don't have $25,000? And really you need more like 30 because if you open up with 25 and you have one losing trade the first day and you drop to 24,700, you can't trade the next day until you wire them in another $300. So it really is better to start with a little bit more than 25,000 so you're not butted right up against the the level, okay? So if you can't do a retail trading, then you have a couple of options. I mean, you can obviously day trade options which would, you know, it, it, is possible, but no pun intended, you have fewer options because, um, you, you know, you have to factor in other things like open interest and is, uh, you know, the, the spread between the bid and the ask and things like that. So oftentimes on the strategies that we trade for gaps, uh, you know, it's not always the highly liquid option stocks like Apple or Netflix and things like that. So, um, but you can do that, right? You can definitely trend trade with options in a cash account. Um, the other way to do it is with a, you can become a proprietary trader. And so this allows a person to trade with a licensed broker dealer, a licensed broker dealer. 
it requires U.S. citizens to have a Series 56 license. It's a new regulation law that was included in the Dodd-Frank bill. And so you um, get sponsored by a proprietary licensed regulated U.S. firm and you sit and you study and you sit and you take the Series 56 license and then you become a licensed uh, proprietary trader. And when you become fully licensed and now set up to, to trade your proprietary account, the broker dealer can give you access to 20 to 1 margin intraday. And so because of that, it requires a lower threshold for capital requirements. So a proprietary account, you can have $5,000 in it, and um, it would allow you to trade as though you had $100,000 intraday because of the 20 to 1 margin. And then profits or losses are reported as a K-1 partnership income because you're part of a partnership. So at the end of the year, you get a K-1 um, right from the broker-dealer's CPA firm and you just include your profit or your loss right on the tax form where you would put the information in for K-1, um, not a CPA or a um, uh, en enrolled agent. So you'd obviously want to consult your uh, tax professional for that. But then also the advantage of uh, proprietary accounts is that you get access to the firm risk control. So if you trade in a retail account like I do and it would never happen to me because I'm disciplined and focused and I trade in my best interest and all of that. But I mean, you, you know, technically you could be down $10,000 in your trade station or options house account on a retail account and nobody's going to call you from there saying, um, excuse me, sir, you, you know, you're down 10 grand today, right? They don't care. It's your money, whatever. But if you're trading for a proprietary account, you can, you know, they're giving you that, that extra margin. And so they're there to help protect you and, and not make you go into the idiot corner because you're becoming reckless. And so they can set parameters intraday that if you're down a certain amount or what have you, and it's just not your day, you, they'll just shut you down so you don't continue to lose money and so on. Okay. Now, I do want to say that there are, uh, there's been a lot of clutter in the proprietary trading market in that when the Series 56 license became a requirement, a lot of rogue international prop firms popped up because they do know that there are some people that are lazy and do not want to get their series 56 license so a lot of those have come up so what i can share with you is that if anybody in here is trading and their software is logics um you immediately should send in paperwork to withdraw your money as fast as possible because it's it's not even you're not even trading on a real account a lot of these international prop firms have just become basically uh, Ponzi schemes, and if you're trading at Nanco or at with using Logix as your software, you you have the illusion that you're trading real money, but you're not. Your money, you sent them money, but you're actually not even trading real money. So just be aware of that. You got to be a uh, you want to be with a licensed U.S. regulated prop firm and get do it the right way. Okay, so let's move on. So I talked about day trading reversal times. There are certain times throughout the trading day that are called reversal times, and we can expect to see prices change direction. That doesn't mean that it always happens. It's when there are certain kind of predictable times, but that doesn't mean that it always happens. However, when we time trades around these reversal times, we tend to get better outcomes. So here they are. 9.35, so then these are all Eastern Standard Time. I know somebody's going to ask me, is it Eastern Standard Time? And I, and I just have to say, not to offend anybody, but no matter where you live in the planet, everything in trading is based on Eastern Standard Time, the financial capital of the world. So I always talk in Eastern Standard Time, and you just have to do the math to get you to whatever time zone that you're in. Okay, so these are all Eastern Standard Time zones. Okay. Um, so 9.35, 10 a.m., 10.30, 11.30, 1.30, 2.30, and 3. Those are kind of the most common ones. And it's not like you just set your clock at 10 o'clock. It's a window, usually 9.50 to 10.10, 10.20 10, to 10.40, so on and so forth, okay? And I wanted to put this one little extra point in here. Is that probably the worst trade setup and the worst time that you can take a trade intraday would be at around 11 a.m. and doing like a breakdown or a breakout at 11 a.m. It's arguably the worst time 
that you could take a trade is at like 11 o'clock in the morning and do a high or a low of the down, uh, day breakdown or breakout, right? Just a terrible trade. So just avoid those. And we'll go on to here to the next slide. A little delay with my, there we go. Okay, so I want to talk about gaps, and then we're going to get into how to analyze them, and then I'm going to show you some charts. So gaps. What makes gaps unique? Well, gaps provide a shock value that gives intraday traders an edge. Well, really, it gives also short-term swing traders an edge as well. Um, but, you know, this, for purposes of today, I'm going to be talking about intraday. Shock value, what I mean by that is that it occurs when it causes people other traders to act in a way they would not otherwise, using emotions rather than logic. And that's usually a good time. When people are acting irrationally, it's a good time for a professional gap trader intraday who is acting rationally and thinking objectively to be able to profit from people's irrational behavior. Gaps often change the landscape of both the short and the long-term pattern of the daily chart. And I'm going to show you some examples. Where in like one one gap, like one overnight gap, like completely the chart has changed its entire course of direction. Okay, let's uh, continue on. So types of gaps. Now, the gap education market has become a little bit cluttered over the years. Um, and so I've tried to declutter it as best I can by having you think in two specific ways. When a stock is gapping, we either want to basically decide or answer the question, two simple questions. Is this a stock that we are, want to play in the direction of the gap, or is this a gap in which we want to play in the opposite direction of the gap? So in the direction would mean a stock gaps up, and the, the trade setups that we would be looking for would be to play long. To trade in the opposite direction would be a stock gaps up, and would be looking to fade it or have it come in and fill the gap. So those are really the two basic questions that you want to answer. You know, there's been things like pivot gaps and continuation gaps and retest gaps and gappity go gaps and all of this kind of, you know, terminology. And it's all just clutter. You just really want to answer those two questions. Is the stock going to go up or is it more likely going to want to fill the gap? And I'm going to show you the nice, easy way in which to do that. So at TSU, through my tick by tick, we recognize and teach three types of gaps that provide that unique edge. So the first one is a professional significant gap. So a professional significant gap would be playing in the direction of the gap. Then there's the TSU amateur significant gap, meaning an amateur gap, meaning that would be one that we would play in the opposite direction of the gap. And the reason I use the word amateur is because if it's a stock that is gapping up, and I'm going to show you these points here, uh, it really answers a question like, who would buy here? And if the answer is no pros, only amateurs would buy here, then we're going to be having it labeled as an amateur gap and going to be looking to fade the gap because no professional would buy there, only an amateur would buy there, and so we're going to be playing it in the opposite direction of the gap. And then there's one that I'm not even going to touch upon today, which is the mega gap, and it's really just reserved for swing trades. Um, so I threw that in there, but you can get all of that great information on mega gaps uh, in the, uh, the the entire course of Tick by Tick. Okay. So let's look at these professional significant gaps. I broke it down to four simple points that you want to analyze before the market opens to determine if it's going to be in your professional gap side of the page or your amateur gap side of the page. Here they are. The first one is location, location, location. Listen, trading for the most part, not 100%, but for the most part, is that we want to take trades at really great locations. We want to be short, uh, shorting stocks at areas of resistance, and we want to be buying stocks at areas of support. The closer that we can buy to support and the closer that we can short to resistance, the better risk-to-reward ratios, the better likelihood that the trade is going to go in our direction quickly after we enter the trade. And so location is a very key point for gap analysis. 
And I'm going to briefly touch upon how to do that. But again, all of the, the, the really nuts and bolts of it is in the tick by tick course. But you want to just look to see where the stock was gapping from and where the stock is gapping to. Now, if you really want to be a, per, a, 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 a day trader and trade gaps, you have to have a software system that provides you pre-market data. You need to be able to see candlesticks in price action before the market opens, so both after market and before market. In fact, I, I saw a um, day trading post from a, another room yesterday, and uh, they had mentioned that they had a losing trade, and it was probably because they had predicted where the stock, predicted wrongly where the stock was going to open. And I was like, huh? Like predicted where the stock is going to open? You should know exactly where the stock is going to open because your data should tell you it, you know, right up until 9, 29, 59 Eastern Standard Time, exactly where the last print was and where the candlestick is showing you. So if you do not have pre-market data, you definitely want to have a software platform that has that. Okay, let's continue on. So location, location, location. Then you have short-term pattern. So what we're looking for there is we want to ideally have the most recent short term of the chart, the most recent short term, either the day before or, you know, even the week before to be kind of either going sideways or going in the opposite direction of the gap, because that's going to create that shock. That's going to create, you know, yesterday's candle was a big, you know, green candle. And today, you know, everyone wakes up and the stock is gapping below that. Right? Well, that's not good for all of those people who bought the prior day in the green candle. That's going to create them to act irrationally. Okay, and I'm going to show you plenty of chart examples, so do not worry. Relative strength, relative weakness. So, off, so think of it, this is, I always get uh, questions on this, and simple way to think about it. If there's a big gap in the market, like, you know, like that day, there's been some recent couple weeks ago when we had those big gap downs in the market. So if there's a big, if you like turn on CNBC in the morning and Joe Kernan's there or that, you know, other little pretty woman there that's there sitting there talking next to him and uh, they say, hey, you know, the futures are way down and the market's going to open up down. So, you know, the spiders, the SP, S&P and the Dow, the DIA and the Qs are all going to be gapping down. What would you think that most stocks that trade on those indices would also be doing? What would you think most stocks would be doing? If the market was gapping down big, right, it'd also be gapping down. Absolutely, right. So, if the market's gapping down considerably, and this, and every stock is kind of gapping down, then there's really no differentiation between the stock that's gapping and the market. It's probably just related to the market. It's just a market gap. The market's gapping down. The stock's gapping down. So, as to find the best high quality gaps, we actually want to look for stocks that are gapping in the opposite direction of the market. So if the market's gapping down and there's a few stocks that are gapping up, well, you know, okay, right? There's obviously, you know, these stocks are in play. They're gapping against the what the market's gapping. And so these are relative strength or it could be the other way. The market's gapping up and these stocks are gapping down. They're showing extreme relative weakness to the market. The other way that you can look at it is if the market's kind of opening flat and there's a few significant stocks that are gapping up, then great, you know, it also meets that point of relative strength, relative weakness. And then lastly is volume. Now, volume, you want to look at it from two perspectives, both intraday, uh, I'm sorry, both pre-market and aftermarket. So, again, you have to have that access. I mean, I've seen some trading rooms call Gappity Goes uh, the night before, and there's been one print for like three shares at that one price, and they're just assuming that, that stock is going to open up there. So you have to be able to see what the, um, you have to be able to see w w uh, where the stock is going to open up and how much volume, the more volume, the better. So for pre-market, I want to see at least 25,000 shares have been traded pre-market on a stock that's gapping. If it's like three, four, 500 shares, I'm not interested in it. It just could be just some, you know, off order being filled. I want to be trading where the big money's trading. And then in addition to that, you also want to look back in the history of the chart. And ideally, you want to have at least a stock that has average daily volume of at least 750,000. So yeah, are there instances where a stock could be trading four or 500,000 shares and in that one day of a significant gap, it can play itself out? Yes. But typically, the lower the volume history on the stock, the more difficult it's going to be to trade intraday. Um, 
one broker is going to have more of a difficult time getting shares to short it. Uh, and then there's also going to be a big variance or spread between the bid and the ask. And because it's not a, typically a widely traded stock, and so it's going to make um, entries intraday a little bit more difficult. So I just use the rule 750,000 average volume over the last six months is good enough. Okay? All right. So here's an example, um, and I'll walk you through this here. Uh, and hold on one moment. I'm going to pull up. Uh, here we go. So I got the Camtasia new pointer, so it's all cool like that too. Okay, so here is um doesn't matter what the stock is, but this is the daily chart right here. D and it's Sprint. Okay, and then this is the five minute chart, 15 minute chart, and 60 minute chart. Okay, and so here on this particular day. On the daily chart, you can see that Sprint opened up at the top of this red candle right there. So is this a good location? Well, you can see here I have this kind of yellow line drawn right there at the below of this pivot here, and it's gapping just below that. So here is all this previous support, and this stock is gapping right below that. Is that a good location? Yes, it's gapping to a really great location right below a prior support area which now means that this kind of gold area here this line is going to act as new resistance so a great location you give it a check short term well the day before sprint had collected some buyers it had you know opened up basically right at the low of the day and closed right at the high of the day Well, I'm looking at it on my other screen. I can see it like on my Apple off computer where I'm just an attendee and I can see it great. So I don't know, maybe you can put it in HD or something like that. Okay. Um, and so yesterday was all filled with buyers. And then today it gaps down on this day below an area of support, which now becomes new resistance. The people that bought yesterday thinking that Sprint was going to go to $9 woke up. And it was though they were like, hey, honey, I bought it at six and, you know, Sprint's announcing earnings tomorrow. And if it gaps up to like ten dollars, we're going to be able to send our kids to Harvard without any student loans. And you're going to be loving me. But what happens is that it gaps down and this guy like got out of his bed and he starts walking into the master bathroom to like, you know, spray some water on his face to get ready for work. And there's like this dude there with a big baseball bat and just swings it and like knocks him right in the head. And he's like, uh, guess what, sir? Uh, sprint gap down below a support area, and you're, you're kind of not looking really good. So all of these folks that bought yesterday need to what? If you had bought the prior day, like you bought the high of the day, the end of the day, by the end of the day, $6, whatever it was, and tomorrow you wake up and it opens up below here, right here, what would, you, what would be your first kind of inclination if you had bought the day before? sell exactly right just not only did you would you be selling but you'd be you were wishing that you didn't tell your wife that story the night before how your kids are going to go to harvard for you know without any student loans okay and so people are going to act irrationally here they're trapped in the short term and um i don't have what the market was doing that day but you'll get to a point where you just kind of know that a gap like this wasn't caused by the market Okay, but this showed relative weakness to the market. The market was not gapping down that day. It was either gapping up or flat. And then the volume historically is fine. And then intraday in that morning, the pre-market was showing great volume. So here's what it looked like when a stock opened up. It opened up and it completely just traded right down. And this is an example I'm going to show you, an example of a trade that you can take right here in the very early part of the day or a trade that you can take in the afternoon on a 15 minute chart that you can take if you're a little bit slower with the entry order or what have you another trade that you can take right there and i'm going to show you those trades here in a moment any questions on that okay let's uh continue on here okay so i'm going to show you just a couple of specific trade setups that you can take 
once you have identified these gaps that you can just look for and hunt for intraday. And the more that your trades can look very similar, the better. So you just recognize in patterns intraday is basically what we're doing is just recognizing patterns. So here's a very effective early morning momentum trade based on the power of the pro significant gap. The gap and go trade setup. Now, I, I, it's my least favorite. I, I don't really even trade the gap and go setup very much at all, but I'm going to show it to you. It's very highly effective, and I'll show you a kind of an alternative way to play it as well. So what you do is you basically just let the first one or two minute candle close and then you take you enter in two cents above the close of that one or two minute candle and then you place your stop two cents below that candle. That's it. I mean it's pretty simple. Right? Stock opens up, let the first candle close, and then you if it's a significant gap down, you're gonna place your order to short it two cents underneath that candle with a stop two cents over that candle. And the opposite if you were going long. Let's take a look at an example so you can see what that might look like. Seems to be a delay with my click here. Here we go. So here's a um, here's a gap here, and um, this was a gap in Red Hat. This is the daily chart, the big chart right here, and here's the stock gapping down opening up you know basically uh, a little lower than that oh Cantasia is let's see it's opening up right well you can see it was opening up right basically there okay so you can see that it was taken out that little pivot area was taken out the previous day it was even taken out this little pivot area here and it was actually even taken out this one right in here so this was taking out four previous support areas so Really good location. And then in the short term, yes, there was a couple of black candles, but a lot of people get confused by that. A lot of, you know, novice or, you know, ones that are just learning about gap trading, don't be alarmed. It doesn't have to be a green, you know, white candles the day before or green if you're using green and red. Um, you can see the prior day it had the bottoming tail. Right. This um, so that it brought in buyers at the end of the day, gap down. And this gap is taking out so many pivots. There are so many people here that are trapped that are going to obviously need to get out. I mean, if you bought here or here or here or here, or here, or here and you woke up, you know, you're obviously going to act irrationally. OK. And so here's what it looks like in a smaller time frame. Here's the one minute chart on Red Hat. One minute chart. Stock opens up and just closes right there. The first candle closes in that kind of doji entry stop home run right that's it if you catch a trade like this you know just walk away you're done done for the day you're 10 15 go home do whatever or if you're at home go do something else now i don't tend to do like i said i don't do the gap and goes the alternative entry would be i let the first candle get taken out and then i wait for this little novice buyers to come in thinking that it's going to be a trade in the opposite direction and I'm just shorting it right at the top of that as soon as that candle closes I'm shorting it right at the top of this um, black candle and I'm just putting the stop right there and basically the same trade but you got a little tighter stop and entry okay so just a nice little easy gap and go trade or just let it take it out and just wait for that first little retracement okay nice simple Because I just take the other one. I just take that alternative entry, Mike. Right? I just take that alternative entry. Okay, so here's uh, Carnival Cruise Lines. All right. So here's the uh, daily chart. You can see the stock was opening up here, and it kind of sunk all day. No pun intended, Carnival Cruise Lines. Um, so, again, this... Uh, Met all of the points, great location, short-term volume, relative weakness, and so a nice professional gap. So intraday, what you need to do is just you want to hunt for the, let that first one-minute candle close. And you got your entry and your stop. The other alternative entry, the one that I take, is right underneath that doji candle right there. Let the first candle get taken out. Let it do its little retracement, and I short right under there, and now I don't have to use that high of the day stop. I can just use right above that candle 
And so I get the same move, but more profit, better risk to reward. But either trade, totally fine, totally acceptable. All right, so Kerry, you have to look at the four points. Go back into the um, uh, the tick by tick and, and really look and analyze those four points so you can get really clear as to analyzing them before the market opens as to whether or not they're going to be professional significant or uh, significant amateur gaps. So here's another gap uh, setup that you can take from a professional gap. It's just a very simple TSU pullback. It's a trade setup. So it's not a type of gap. It's just a trade setup. So you have this professional gap. And on this particular setup, you're just waiting for the stock to pull back a little bit. And you look for reversal candle and take the entry. So here's what you do is you buy the pullback only if it held a higher low or failed to make a new low. So once the first candle closes and it pulls back, you don't want it to take out the, the, the low. You want to just have it um, be inside that candle. And these typically occur after 9.40 uh, in the morning. And so let me show you an example. Once this thing changes, here we go. So here's this gap. This was, uh, what stock was this? Looks like it was AMAT, daily chart. Okay, so the stock was opening up here. So the location of the stock, not ideal because it's too far away from previous, you know, the most recent supply uh, resistance area above. So it's opened up a little bit too far. So this wouldn't really be a great gap and go trade because you're kind of too far extended away already from previous resistance, which is new support. So you want the stock to just pull back a little bit and then look for a buy setup. And I'll show you what it looks like. Right here, 15 minute chart. You can use it on the 15, 5-minute, what have you, right? 15 is a nice little conservative one. Does a little pullback, gives the reversal candle, entry, stop, and then ride it out for the day. Okay, so that's what you do on that one. Nice, simple trade. Okay, let's look at another one. This is uh, Lily, I think. Uh, it doesn't really, again, it's, 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 here's the thing. You don't even need to know what the symbols are because the, these gap trades, they're, they're timeless. They're, they're, they have no relation to the symbol. It can be any symbol whatsoever. It doesn't matter. Right? So you don't need to go look at Lily and go, wow, it gave a really great setup that day. I'll go trade Lily. It doesn't make a difference. It works no matter what the symbol is, okay? no matter what the symbol is. Um, so here's a nice gap opened up right here. Great location. Took out that area, this area, opened up to a really great location. Short-term, volume, all of that good stuff, everything, all four points are met. So what you want to do is, uh, here it is, opens up. The opens up. This is the two-minute chart, two-minute. And it immediately starts to go higher, brings in some buyers. They're thinking, hey, it got down too far. It's probably going to be, you know, uh, it's going to fill the gap, right? So they start buying in, and then right at, that resistance area on the daily chart is where the pros are waiting and it punches the stock down and you got a nice little two minute sell set up right there with a stop right there and you're off to the races. So I, I start, Cheryl, I start uh, with the one minute chart for like the first 10 minutes and then I'll go to the uh, two minute chart till 9.50 then I'll go to the five minute chart and then after 10.15 I go to the 15 minute chart so I just kind of as the day progresses I go to a bigger time frame yes yeah trade station does absolutely okay uh, let's go to the next one here's a uh, OAS I think it's again doesn't matter what the symbol is we're going to make a difference. Strategy works regardless of the symbol, but it's a daily chart. And so here's a stock that was opening up right there. So was it a good location? Yes. Uh, did it have a nice little short-term little pattern break on it? Yes. Had good volume, had relative strength. So nice professional gap. OK, 
Okay, so what you do is you're like, okay, I'm going to play this, only going to play this long. I'm going to wait for a nice little pullback, and I'll just wait and play this thing on a nice buy setup. And it opens up, and you got all of this previous demand from the last couple of days. The stock opens up and gives a nice reversal candle right there. Entry, stop, and you're off to the races. And if you notice, and like I said, all, you want your patterns to look the same. Um, I have probably you know, 500 chart patterns that, I, that are like this of trades that I take. These are all trades that I've taken, and I just take pictures of them at the end of the day, and I just store them in my computer because I go back, and it helps me just recognize pattern recognition. And all my trades always look the same, right? They always look the same. I don't, you know, like I wouldn't. Um, you know, I'm not doing breakouts late in the day. I'm, I'm, all of my patterns are looking the same. I just identify where I want to get long or short, and I look for that pullback, look for that reversal candle, and then enter into the trade. Just keep it simple. All right, here's uh, another one. Gap down. Last three days were white candles. Opens up right there. Nice location, nice short-term shock, the whole thing. And what you do is stock opens up, does just a nice little two-bar pullback, brings in the ones that think that everything's a fade, and then there's the entry, there's the stop, and here. And if you notice something, if on all of these charts, what time is it that they tend to run down to and then have a little bit of reversal. What time is that? What time is that? Yeah, 10.30 reversal. Funny how that works, huh? So when it gets to 10.30, just, you know, or, you know, when it gets into that area, just cover the whole trade. I don't you don't have to live through this and hope to get more. Just just get out of the trade, take your profit and run. All right, we're not marrying these stocks. We're just dating them for a little bit, just testing them out. Here's another one, Shield. If you're as old as me, you remember that commercial? Everything you wanted but didn't get for Christmas, right? Okay. If you live on the East Coast, you probably heard that when you were a kid in the 70s like me. But here's Shield. Here's the daily chart. Gap down. Great location. Not the short-term shock because yesterday was a green candle, so not quite as uh, you know significant from the, the trap. But you can see you got all of this overhead resistance right above. There's the pullback. There's the beautiful doji reversal candle entry stop. And then later on in the day, if you missed that, whatever, here's a nice 15-minute one, just the same thing, just slightly bigger entry and stop because it's 15-minute candles. And then also there's a nice little afternoon one right there, 15-minute sell setup that you can catch that. So on really good gaps, you can play them multiple times sometimes in a day for nice, easy profits. And then there's another one, same thing, got the gap up, and then here's the little pullback buy setup. Right to demand and then off to the races. Type in it too if you've noticed that almost every trade, and these are all trades that I've taken, every trade is almost looks identical. They almost look like the just different symbols, different price, but they almost all look the same. That's it. I'm just a pattern recognition trader. Rate the gap and put my location down, and when it retraces back into that area and gives me a reversal candle like this, I buy it and I put a stop, and that's it. If it stops me out, I lose one risk unit. Let's move on to the next one. Just trade and probabilities is pattern recognition. So here's the TSU 15-minute buy sells, formerly the afternoon delight, but uh, some people have taken it and have absolutely butchered this trade, so I've had, I had to make it like Prince, like formerly the afternoon delight. Now it's just the 15-minute buy sell. And so it's kind of an afternoon trade. So those are ones that like you know don't want to get up early or what have you. You can go ahead and uh, trade this one. It's just a great trade that occurs after lunch from a significant gap. Here's what the trade setup must have. You want the first five or 15-minute candle 
of the day to be a wide range bar. That's what WRB means, wide range bar. Positive means it would be white. Negative means it would be black or green or red or purple or pink, whatever colors that you use the candles. Or a doji bar. By the way, this is a, this is my trade. This is right from my trading plan. I just copied and pasted this right into my from my trading plan. I always write my strategies and what must the chart have, what can it have, what what I would like it to have. First 15 minute candle gets taken out in the morning means the first five or 15 minute candle is a wide range bar doji. It closes and then price takes that out means it trades below it or trades above it. Now I don't use MAs anymore, but you know for those of you that do. Um, you want the price to be at or near the rising or the declining 20 MA on the 15 minute time frame. You want it to be declining if it's a short trade. You want it to be rising if it's a long trade. And then you want to have a void, meaning that uh, a void means just you, you have um, an area on the chart to the next level of support to trade down to or the next level of resistance to trade up to. That difference between where you're entering and the next level of resistance or the next level of support if it's short is a void. You want to make sure that there's enough void so that you can get a nice risk to reward type trade. Okay. Oh, hold on. What did I do here? Ah. What is this? What did I do? Hmm. Looks like I got stuck in between two slides or something. Let's see. I can go back. Hold on. There we go. Oh, that's the must. Okay, let's continue to the next one. Hold on. What happened here? All right, I did that one. Hmm. Kind of trapped here in this thing. I'm not sure what happened. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see here. Hold on. Let me get out of uh, mode. There we go. Might have just been that one slide. Hold on. Oh, interesting. Okay, so there we go. So that's the must-haves there. Okay, good. Shouldn't be a problem now. I don't know what happened. Okay, so here's an example of the afternoon delight, or formerly afternoon delight. It's like Prince, right? No longer Prince. Formerly known as Prince. So here we go. You have a uh, professional significant gap. The only point that really wasn't met was the the um, short term. Yesterday's candle was red. So usually we reserve those for uh, potentially an afternoon type setup. And uh, so here we go. The first couple 15 minute candles close. Nice wide range bar candles. Okay. And then it gets taken out, meaning it trades below it. And then it just retraces, declining volume as it retraces right into the low of that candle, right at afternoon reversal time. And there's your entry, stop, quick profit. Very high probability trades. Really nice. And you can see here on the five minute, so this is the 15 minute chart. That's the 15 minute and this is the five minute. You can see what you're looking for is as it's retracing in here, what creates this doji is this failed breakout on the five minute chart, meaning that there are people here, you know, novice day traders thinking that, you know, it's going to go up like this. And so they buy in right at, I mean, they're basically buying right at resistance. So again, you don't want to buy at resistance. You want to short at resistance. You want to buy at demand. So, but there's a lot of traders out there that don't understand that. No buy at resistance. They bail the failed breakout. And then as soon as that candle triggers, Boom, got that nice trade. All of those folks have to sell, and you're off to the races for a nice little easy afternoon trade. Okay? 
Here's another one. I didn't change the thing because this was from the original tick by tick. But remember, it's formally afternoon delight, like Prince. First candle of the day gets taken out by these candles, and then it just does this low volume, kind of lazy retrace. You wait for the novice traders to come in to do the breakout, and then right underneath that red can white candle by that one, and nice afternoon trade. Three hours, you know, 15, 20 minutes easily. But you want to the best is to just wait for that for these traders right there. Wait for the little green, the white candle to come in, trap those little novice day traders, and then you go right in. And then here's Dish, Dish Networks. Here's what it looked like um, on the five minute. So again, there's that breakout. And they get trapped, and then boom, there's the trade right there. Nice and easy, okay? All right, let's continue. Void, meaning to the next area of support or resistance. <laughs> That's true, Dennis. Um, TSU amateur gap trades. I'm going to wrap. We're going to get about 10 more minutes. So I'm going to go a little over. But, of course, anybody who knows me knows that I always go a little over. Um, very effective early morning momentum based on the power of the amateur gap. So these are guns that we're going to play in the opposite direction of the gap. Opposite direction of the gap. So we're not going to play long in a gap up. We're going to go the other way. So, and guess what? The setups are exactly the same. They're just opposite. Reverse gap and go trade. Short two cents under the low of the first candle, one or two minute candle, and then you put a stop right above that. Okay? And I'll show you. So here's Agilent. So remember I said in the beginning, what's a good way to kind of determine if it's an amateur gap or not? Well, this would be an example of it. So the stock opened up here. Now, these folks here in the tail were buyers, but who would buy that? Like, who would buy – like, if you had – like, if you had saw this gap in the morning opening up at $53 and the day before, this is what a chart looked like beforehand, and you woke up and said, boy, wow, if I can just buy Agilent at $53, everything's going to work out for me. Like, I'm going to have that home run. Who would buy that? No, no professional would buy up here. I mean, look how far it's gapped away from resistance. And imagine like you had bought here or somebody had bought here or your brother-in-law bought here or even you bought the day before and it gapped up to here. What would you do? What would you do? You would do what? You would do sell. If you said buy, you got to get at me for some coaching because if you're buying at $53, we're going to have to have a conversation. Okay, right. Sell. Absolutely. But there is always people that buy. I'm always fascinated by the tail. I'm always fascinated by that. Who are those people? Don't be that guy. So here's what it looks like. Here's the one-minute chart. All right? There's the... Uh, well, there's these folks the ran up, and they get punched down, and there's the entry, and there's the stop, and there you go. Now, the alternative one would be let it take it out and then short right there on this little retrace. That's the one that I do, and quick move, right? I mean, believe me, this move right here in two minutes is enough for you to just be done by 9.35 in the morning. I mean, that's it. I mean, that's all you need, really. That's a multiple R trade. As crazy as that looks, it's a multiple R trade. So let's look at another one. Here's Cena. Cena. Real quick. Opened up here. Let's let's count the days. One, two, three, four. We'll count that as like one up day. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We'll count this as one up day. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. And then it gaps up to $86. If I can buy $86 on the 15th up day, I'm going to retire at the young age of 46 years old. The only one that would ever think that and would buy at $86 would be an amateur. No professional would buy the 16th up day at $86 on this gap up. Nobody. So it's an amateur gap. So that means we're going to take advantage of those Folks that bought here and here and here and here and here and here, and they're going to sell and take profit. 
Now, if you bought here and you didn't take profit here, that's another question too, but we'll, we'll just let that one go for the moment. Okay, and so here's what happens the next day. I mean, that morning it opens up, two minute. Candle closes, stop, entry, stop. One day, oh, by the way, 10, 20, 10, 30 reversal. What does it do? It reverses a little bit at support too. Look to the left for your target. There's all support. Price comes in the there at 1030. Don't hope it's going to continue. Trade off of supply and demand, support and resistance. Exit out of the trade. Very nice trade. Beautiful. Okay. Everyone getting that? Nice and simple. Let's keep it simple. Here's uh, one more trade. It's the basically the same thing. It's just the pullback one. The exact one just in the opposite time frame. So let's look at it. By the way, I'm going to use the same the same chart. If you, so that's the beautiful thing is that if you're not comfortable with the gap and go or you miss it, don't worry about it. Just wait for the next one. Here you go. So now we're on a five-minute chart. There's the five-minute chart. Same exact day. I was just on the one earlier, right? Here's the first lower high. Here's the second lower high. Beautiful. Right underneath that, stop there. Just as much profit as if it took the gap and go. So don't chase it. Don't be this guy shorting here, you know, on the 15-minute low and then have to live through this whole pullback and wonder what happened. Just wait for it to pull back into prior resistance and then short it there. Don't do the breakdowns late in the morning. They're just they're they're, they're bad trades. Yeah, okay. And so that's it. That's what I have. Um, let me see if there's any questions. Let's see if there's any questions. Can I go back to the previous slide? Which one did you want to go me to go back to? Um, let's see. What data bundle do you subscribe to at TradeStation? Level two or more? Uh, yeah, level two. Yeah, level two. Yep, level two at TradeStation. Yep. All right. And what do you mean by void? I did that. Um, so now here's the thing. Um, how quickly do options react to the gap trade? So, um, uh, listen, uh, day trading options is a little bit trickier. It's a little bit trickier because, uh, you know, you first have to, if you're going to trade it using gaps, right, you have to make sure that the stock that's gapping is is a good tradable option stock. So that might not be the case. So you have to be a little, you know, a little bit more mindful of that. I'd say if you're going to be an option day trader, you're better off sticking to more of the trend trades. And I teach all about the trend trades in class three of tick by tick. So if you are a current subscriber to the silver, gold, or platinum, and you haven't taken tick by tick, and you're interested in taking day trading, well, there's eight full two and a half hour classes that are broken down into nice like nine and 10 minute chunks. I've recorded it just this year, like earlier this year, I think it was in April or, or some time around there. Um, maybe it was December, I forget. But they're all recorded in nice little things so you can stop, go, what have you. Now, if you're not a member and you're like, hey, you know, Trade Smart looking like they got a lot of great education, um, with any membership, you get access to the, the eight classes of Tick by Tick. So, um, and so this was just not even basically one class. So, um, you know, there's eight full two and a half hour classes of Tick by Tick. That you get access to so you definitely want to do that how do you find gapping stocks so um uh basically uh, the, the the most time that you're going to have the the most gapping stocks to choose from is during earning season right because stocks that typically have earnings the big institutions are um creating the gaps in those things in the after hours so typically during earning season you're really going to find them most any you know decent software that you have uh, trade station, what have you, for sure. You know, any trades, you know, platform is going to have the ability in the morning to um, find stocks that are gapping on either a hot list or something like that. You know, each platform calls it something different. Um, um, and yeah, so that's usually the kind of the best place to find them. Yeah, you can apply gaps um, to swing trading as well, absolutely. And I actually show it in tick by tick. I actually show um the mega swing gap trade and then also the a, a, a trade called the sway trade which is a new strategy that i developed for for sometimes those folks you know like I, i've coached a lot of 
gentlemen that are, you know, and ladies that are kind of retired, you know, they have a decent size portfolio, they've carved a little bit out, they want to manage it. And so, you know, they've come to trade smart to do it right. And they're like, you know, hey, you know, I got some time, but I don't really want to sit there all day and trade. Um, you know, is there something that I can do on a really good gap to get in and then, but with the expectation that I can hold it for like maybe a week and, um, and, and uh, yeah. And so there's a trade that I teach in tick by tick called the sway trade which is a kind of a combination of a day and a swing. So you take, you enter it in on the day of the gap, but your intention is to hold it for anywhere from two to five days. And it's a very high probability trade. Um, and it requires you really only be at your desk for like the first half an hour of the day. And then you can be on doing whatever it is that you want to do for the rest of the day. So um, remember, you don't have to, to be a day trader means you don't have to be at your desk all day. Um, in fact, the, the majority of the folks that are at their desk all day are the ones that end up, you know, giving back any morning profits and stuff. Right? You just take a trade. And um, so, uh, so Susan, I just said that, right? In the tick by tick class, there's a, a whole conversation and lesson that I give on the sway trade. So if you are a current member on any package, silver, gold, or platinum, you can just go and hit your icon on tick by tick. And I think it's in class... I want to say class five. If you're not a current member, then, you know, for the great specials that they have, you can just become a trade smart member and then you get all, you get everything. You don't just get my course, you get everything. Josh and Jeremy's genius and, and me and, and all of the stuff, the, the stuff. And now also too, if you're in, if, if you're a member and you have access to the trading labs and you're not coming to my Thursday night, although this month I'm doing Monday, I'm doing Monday because I'm filling in during the ignite. I'm just doing the Mondays, but and starting in October again, I'll be back to Thursdays. But if you are interested in gaps or you're day trading or short-term swing trading and you're not coming to my trading lab, you know you definitely want to either attend it live or make sure you listen to the recordings because I spend probably the majority of time on gap analysis, gaps, trades that I've taken. Right. Where, you know, Jeremy's on Monday, he's like the, the, the genius on everything, like, you know, how to set up option trades and, you know, how the, um, you know, oil is related to the Fed and, you know, the dollar related to the yen and all of that stuff that like I have no clue about. Like that stuff is Jeremy's like baby. And then Josh, obviously, with the fibs and the and the uh, trader conditioning and stuff like that, you know, that's his Tuesday. So you get access to just three great different perspectives that, you know, you can use and tie into all, all different time frames of your trading. Okay. All right. Um, when will we re be, when will we play? Be, I don't know about that. That will have to be one of the guys. Now I think, um, um, let's see if there's any other, I've heard one should watch level three orders to assess stock potential. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I just use level two. Never had a problem with it. But if you want level three, you can get it. Would you show the first amateur trade setup slide again? Hmm. Okay. Real quick because I got to stay on time for the. Uh, but, yeah, I'll quickly do it. Um, I guess I can quickly do it real quick. Let's see. The first one. So that would be. Um, I think it's this next one. Oh, it's going every point. That's fine. Right here. No, that's Cena. Uh, this one right here. This is the one. That one right there. Okay. So that's just the Agilent one minute chart. Topping tail, entry, stop. Or you can do the alternative one right there, stop. Okay, the one before. I don't think I had one before. I think this was the first one. Uh, yeah. Oh, this one? All right. And so next week, remember, so like this – what you see here, like the musts, you know, and the exact, I mean, this is, I took this exactly from my trading plan. And so there's no, it's obvious why every trade that I showed you, and these are all trades that I've taken, 
are they look exactly the same because I have a very specific strategy and way in which to enter them. Now, it doesn't matter if you day trade or you swing trade, right? You can, you know, be in Power Trader Live and come up with a nice trading plan as to way to enter into all of the great ideas that Jeremy and Josh give you. So make sure that you come next week to my trading plan one so that you can get an understanding of how to simply, 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 <laughs> easily write a nice trading plan. Because the reason why all my trades look the same is because they, they all have to match my trading plan. And if they don't, then I just don't take them. And that's why all of those trades that I showed you look almost identical, just different symbols. Okay. All right. Let's wrap this up. It is 12-12. Um, yeah. Oh, so. Yeah, so today is FOMC, so I have a rule in my trading plan that I never have an open position in a day trade before FOMC. So um, I exit out of all trades if I'm in any before FOMC because um, you just get those crazy wild moves, and I don't got time for that. Okay, so next week it will be the same time, 11 o'clock in the morning on Thursdays. You're very welcome, Mark. I appreciate it, everybody. Um, and um, it will be posted. And you're all good. And thanks to the moderators, Bruce, Ron, Chris, who is here. Take care, everybody.